Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for Upper Decks Keepers of the Quest Star. It's a dungeon crawler two player game where you'll be playing as not only a DM for the other player, but also you'll be playing as a party of adventurers entering into your opponent's dungeon, attempt to gather the Quest Star and escape from all the traps and monsters your opponent has laid for you. And if you're able to do so before your opponent, while well, you play as their DM, you win the game. Set up your adventurers, set up the dungeon for your opponent, and of course, name it along with the monsters and the traps and begin. The player who escapes first is the winner in the game. Let's take a look down below and I'll show you how it's played. So here we have the setup for Keepers of Questar and I'll explain how it works with one player so you'll understand how to do it with both. The first things first, you're going to select as the DM uh, a location for your enemy or the other player and you'll choose that location. You'll give yourself one of the boards and your opponent one. And then you're going to have the opposing player do the same thing. So they'll choose the Great Hall, and this is where you are going to be. Then you're also going to take one of these boards, and you are going to hide your specific location that you're DMing for uh, with this little guy here. And you'll place it just like that so that your opposing player cannot see, and the other player will do the same thing. So then you're going to have two boards blocked off. Then after that, you are going to be able to create your own dungeon. I'll just go ahead and remove these guys now so that you can see what uh, and how you create this dungeon. So I have the ice caves that Callie is going to be going into. So I will take all of my tokens and each player is going to get their own unique set of tokens. There's going to be battle tokens that are red, trap tokens that are orange, and then you're going to have a treasure token. You're going to have an objective token, a wellspring, and then an in and an out location, which is where you're people start or where your enemies start and where they need to exit. And you'll place all of those tokens on the board anywhere you want. And the only rule to it is A, you can't have two of the same type of trap with the same level next to each other. So you can't have two traps that are level two next to each other. And you can't have two baddies that are level one next to each other unless there is a border wall separating them. And of course place an in and an out every player is going to know where their party starts. So in this case, if I chose this location for Callie to be in to start the game, I'll actually place an in location on their side and their player marker or their party marker, and she will do the same thing. Another thing to note is these guys cannot be on top of each other. You must separate them except for one rule, the quest star or the quest or objective. You'll take that token, you can place it down where you want, and you can include a trap or a monster on that location. And so for instance, I chose a level three monster, which is my boss, the necromancer on the location space. So if Callie ever uh, has to enter that space, then, uh, or, or sorry, yeah, if I ever have to enter that space, that can be for me, uh, then the, the boss will trigger. Okay. Each player is also going to get a set of heroes, and there's four heroes for each player. You can choose them randomly. You can have your opposing DM choose you, you an adventuring party, or you could also go ahead and draft them. It's really up to you. Once you do that, then you are ready to begin the game. Set all your extra tokens that are squares aside. These are what you're gonna use when you move through the dungeon uh, and basically find a trap or a monster or something like that, and you'll place it as kind of a memory uh, token, kind of like Battleship and go ahead and take your dungeon sheet or your quest sheet. This thing here is going to detail the map you are having to go, uh, that you're having your opponents go into. So for instance, the Great Hall of the Golden Giant. My level one monsters are goblins, then you have level two for orcs, and then necromancers for level three. My traps are an alarm, darkness, and spawning pit. And then I have my item, which is gonna give an XP potion to the person who, who walks into it. And the goal is to find the quest star and escape. Um, and of course there could be something else like a doom pit or an eternal pit or something like that that you can, you can add to the game as well. And now you're ready to begin the game. On your turn, you're going to get four actions and each of your heroes will get one of those actions. So if one of your heroes dies, you'll only have three actions to utilize. You will choose one of your heroes. You'll kind of move it to the side indicating that you are choosing to take that character's action. And then you are going to do one of two things. You can either A, move, or B, investigate. If you don't want to do either of those for any of your characters, you can also choose to rest. By utilizing all of their actions, you can then rest and give one of your heroes a reprieve of one HP. So you can heal them for one. Sometimes abilities might let you do that for two or even three if you've unlocked their potential via XP but I'm just gonna go ahead and take actions. So here I'm gonna be playing on this board, which is uh, basically this dungeon here. And these are kind of hidden from other players. 
So this character will go and they'll be able to take their action and they can choose to move and they can always choose to move up, down, left or right and or they can choose to investigate up, down, left or right. So for instance, I can go ahead and move this character over here, which is also going to move this character over here for the DM. And the DM will then say, there's nothing there. Or maybe if there was something there, like a trap, they'd say, oh, you've encountered a level two trap, which is a Gorgon pit or something like that. And uh, then after that, you will encounter the thing. Or if there's nothing there, the player will go again, choosing another, kit, another character, taking another action. I'm going to investigate this area here. Oh, there's nothing there. Okay, well then I'll use this character to move there. Great. And then this character here will move up one more space. And so this character will go, uh-oh, uh, this dungeon master will go, oh, you ran into a level one. And a level one is a goblin. And so when you encounter a battle, you'll check to see your charts. And your charts are on your DM screen, which is very nice. It tells you the different types of monsters and traps and what they do. Typically speaking, though, it's going to be a one to four or a one to six battle. So you'll take the four chips for a level one goblin. These are the four here. Uh, one, two and three and four. And then the DM is going to choose a number. So I'm the DM here versus this player over here. So I will choose the number three. This player over here will then get to guess. Uh, is it number two? No, it's not. Take a damage. Okay, choose this damage and place it on any character. Is it a number one? No, take a damage. Okay, place it on another character. How about three? It is three, in fact, and you do defeat the monster. So this character will flip, well, this player will flip over this thing, indicating the monster has been defeated. And this player over here can use tokens, like this one over here, and uh, place it underneath their character, indicating that they have indeed found a monster there and were able to defeat it. You gain experience based on the level of the monster. Level ones give you one, level twos give you two, and level three gives you three experience. And the character that beat the monster, this one over here, will gain the experience. Experience will generate new skills and abilities. At one, you'll be level one. At three, you'll be level two. And at six, you'll be level three. And you can choose to use one of your abilities when you activate the character to move or investigate. And uh, you can only do that once per time you activate it, so once per round. And they have a ton of different choices that you can have. You can have them heal extra while resting. They can move more than once. They can be able to select more than one number, etc., etc. In fact, one really cool ability is they can try and heal. And the way that works is the D DM will, will basically take these letters out, H-E-A-L, and they'll choose one, and then you'll say, is it E? And if you're correct, you can heal a character to full. That's really useful. Uh, and the other one is trap. So if you encounter a trap, you'll take these out like this, T-R-A-P. So in fact, if this thing was actually a trap instead of a monster, um, and this character walked into that space, then the DM would choose one of those letters, and you would say, is it an R? If it's not, the trap will activate, and you'll do whatever it says on the trap board. However, if it is the actual letter, then you will disarm the trap and nothing bad will happen. It's a way to kind of slow players down and hurt them. If any of your characters ever lose their health, then they are going to be removed from the game, but there are ways to bring them back. And if a character gets all the way up to six experience, they will gain the abilities and be able to use one on their turn. After you've used all four of your abilities, basically investigating or moving with each of your characters, then you'll move on to the movement phase. You will move one of the monsters on the board uh, to a location adjacent to it for the other players. When the other player moves around, the monsters kind of move around to have their own independent nature, independent movement. And then, of course, after movement is done, the next player will get a chance to go, activating his or her monsters, moving for each of them, and hopefully not encountering, but potentially encountering traps and or the monsters. Another thing to note too is for this specific scenario, the objective is to find the quest star. So in this case here, if this player goes all the way around the map and gets to here, which is here, they will encounter the quest star. And if they find it and there's nothing there, they'll simply gain the quest star. And their final objective is to escape, which is to find this location, doodle 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 do, and exit. And remember, whenever you encounter something, you'll simply place it there. If you don't actually, if you investigate it, you'll place it there. If you encounter it, you'll flip it over. And once you find the exit, so for instance, if I was here and I investigated down here and I found the exit and I already had the quest star, I could walk there and then I would have exited out and I would have won the game as long as I was the first person to do so. And that's basically the idea of the game. Take four actions, investigating or move, utilize an action for each character that you are taking it for, and then move a monster 
get to the quest star, exit the, the dungeon, and whoever gets out first is the winner. If you want, you can also add unique extra scenarios. You can include different traps or monsters that all have their own unique abilities. Level ones are all basically the same thing. They're all one to four battles. So you'll use these tokens for one to four. But as you get further down the list, they can become one to sixes or have their own unique abilities. You'll also notice that you can see what healing does, how damage is taken, what traps do and how you utilize them, fighting, and so on and so forth with your DM screens, and each player will have the same ones uh, indicated on them for their different adventures that they're sending their opponents on. Otherwise, though, that's the basic idea of the game. The main things I want to reiterate to you are when you want to take an action with a character, you need to have activated that character for a move or inspection, and then you can do that ability. Additionally, experience is only given to the character who walks into a space and defeats a monster, but health can be allocated in any way that you choose. If you ever go to zero HP by having all the amount of health placed on a character because <laughs> they took too much damage, that character is removed, but it can be brought back by, I don't know, simply reviving him. And most of the time it'll revive them back to one health. And other times you can choose to heal and remove all the HP from a character. And all combat and traps are using these things here, which is kind of like a guessing mechanism. Once you've played the base game, which is just simply going through the dungeon, finding the quest star and escaping, you can select any of their other adventures, which you kind of make up on your own, or simply make up your own quests. As long as it's balanced for everyone in the same rules, it'll work out just fine in Keepers of Quest Star. Let's go ahead and have my review now. So Keepers of the Quest Star is basically a two-player dungeon crawler, but it's also one of those games that you can customize. You're making your own dungeon that your opponents are going to have to explore, find their objective, and then leave. You'll be setting it up differently depending on the number of maps you have to choose from, and of course they'll be playing on the map you choose, and you'll be playing on the map that they choose. You can go ahead and gather the adventurers that you would like, and there is a vast variety of them, at least there's four for each player, and you can choose to either give it to your opponent as uh, the dungeon master, or you guys can select them one at a time. It really doesn't matter how you do that, but it does provide a little bit of variability uh, to allow you to set up a different party each and every time you go into your dungeon. Uh, the also interesting laugh fact about this game is that you're able to kind of select the quests and objectives as you choose. Uh, you can go ahead and start with the basic one, which is gathering the quest star, and then of course you could uh, move on to other unique objectives. Uh, maybe for instance you have to find and save the maiden, or um, rescue the uh, trapped man from the jail cell, etc, etc, and uh, free them or, or bring them to justice, or whatever, you can fight the big bad boss. Um, the game of course is one of those things things that kind of feels like battleship in a way. You basically are going to have your own little player screens, you're going to block off the map that your opponent is going to be attempting to go through, and the same will be said on your side. You'll be moving your character along the board, and you're gonna get four actions. One action for each alive adventurer in your party. If adventurers pass away, you will lose those actions, so you want to maintain the adventurers that you have for as long as humanly possible, and make sure that you distribute damage as evenly as possible to keep those characters alive. You might even have to rest throughout the game, which basically makes you end your turn to keep yourself from passing on, utilizing the ability to heal your adventurers. Every adventurer has unique options and abilities that they can use when it is their turn, and uh, each adventurer gets their own unique action, which is also solidified with their own unique specific type of unique actions on the player's boards. And they of course have their own unique health as well. Uh, the game, like I said, is kind of a mix between a dungeon crawl, meets kind of like a customized choose your own adventure type of game, mixed with a little bit of uh, the battleship aspect of, uh, are you here? Uh, is there a bad guy here? Is the objective over here? Do we want to just simply take a chance and move into a space, or are you prepared to just uh, search it and then enter it, losing those precious actions? Because your objective is just to simply get to the end. It doesn't matter about how many characters are left alive at the end, it doesn't matter if uh, you I don't know, you, all your characters have no experience, very little experience. It's it's all based around just getting the objective done as quickly as humanly possible. And so because of that, the game's kind of uh, random in a lot of ways. First of all, you don't know what you're walking into, and then when you do end up walking into it, if you're not prepared to use those actions, uh, the base uh, aspect of the game is choosing tokens. Uh, when you fight a monster,
monster. It could be one to four, one to six. You'll choose one of the tokens. Your opponent has set aside one specifically. If you guess correctly, you succeed. If you fail, you take a damage, and you'll do that one to four times for the small monsters and one to six for the big ones, including the bosses, of course. Uh, the bosses provide a bunch of unique little aspects to them and have unique uh, abilities of their own. Most of the base monsters, one level one, level two, generally speaking, are pretty similar in nature. They require you to guess correctly, and it turns into a guessing game for combat. There's no D20 rolling, which I would expect for a dungeon crawler that's similar to a D&D &D kind of uh, DMing slash like role playing type of game. This game here requires you to role play. You're going to need to role play in this game to make it, it, it advance in that, that way in which you make it a little more fun because otherwise you're just going back and forth, uh, checking this space, checking that space, checking this space. Okay, I got here. Okay, now I need to get here. But with that DMing aspect, with the role playing added to it, it creates a little bit more atmosphere, a little bit more environment. And so you have to have a big imagination for this game. Artwork is solid, easy to understand, the game plays rather quickly, and there's a lot of variety as far as the characters and dungeons that you can choose. The game also provides a ton of uh, additional things that you can add to the game. In fact, uh, it doesn't even explain qu quite a few of the additional content in the game, mainly just the base aspect of the quest star. You kind of will have to make up your own adventures as you go along and want to play the game consistently with uh, different quests and objectives, including making your own bosses and, of course, monsters. For some of you, that's going to be a nice reprieve and allow you to kind of customize and mold the adventure for a two-player DM dungeon crawler type game. And for other of you that don't like to use your imagination that much, and of course having to create your own rules, it might not be for you. Uh, for me personally, this game here is a solid DMing, like, dungeon crawl role playing style game it must be played with a role you must be able to be creative and want to make your own customized rules and so because of that it's typically not something that's going to see play in my house a whole lot because i suck at imagination type games i'm not a great like dungeon and dragons player i don't really know understand all that too much i know the basic ideas i like the combat i like the story but as far as the role playing having to explain certain things to players it's not really my cup of tea and this does that in a lot of ways so for some of you that's going to be really good and for others it's not going to be so great. What I really wish in this game is that they would have included all of the rules for all of the content they had in the game. All the additional objectives, the there's certain things like the resurrection potion doesn't really tell you how it works. Now it's, that one's fairly straightforward but there's also an EXP potion. Do you get one, two, three XP from it? It doesn't really say. You kind of have to mold it based on what you choose and of course as long as you make it fair for both players it really shouldn't matter but there is that little caveat. Um, and of course there's the ability to put an item in the game like a mimic chest or a valuable potion and what's going to stop you as a dm from always just putting in a mimic as compared to anything else so there's specific rules that i think they should like provide a little more clarity to and um state a little more like solidify the rules just a little more which would make me feel a little bit better about the game as far as what i need to do i don't like having to think of things on the fly or uh, make them up before the game begins i just prefer it to be there specifically written out for me and for that reason alone that's probably the reason why it's not something I would specifically take out and play. However, friends like Josh and of course Max, this is the type of game that they're going to really enjoy. Uh, for Callie, the thing that kind of set her aside in this game was the fact that you have to utilize these tokens here for combat. You'll simply pick them and if your opponent or the DM was the one that chose the token, if you choose correctly, you will basically defeat the monster. It's random. And of course you can use things like abilities on your characters, provided you chose that character to move into the space that fights the monster. Um, to mitigate that, sometimes you'll be able to choose more than one um, number. Other times you can just simply defeat m simple monsters like level ones and level twos outright. And other times you'll be stuck choosing one number at a time. If I chose four and you went one, three, five, six, two, four, you'd take a ton of damage. And so that can just be a whole like luck based system. And you don't really have any control other than just hopefully being able to guess what your opponent has thought. Um, the combat and the way, the, the combat's very unique though. That's one thing about it is the guessing system I haven't seen before. Uh, the experience system's really cool. I like the fact that each of your characters level up and give you unique abilities. I do like the fact that it is customizable and I really do in fact enjoy the fact that you can customize your dungeon and choose entry points and exit points and a specific objective. That's really fun. I actually really do enjoy the battleship aspect of the game in which you're going to have these little screens that block off certain portions of the maps that your opponents are moving through and you kind of can also move the monsters a little bit so there's a little bit of control as to what's going on and I don't even mind the aspect of storytelling like okay in mine for instance it's the dungeon of the golden dragon or the golden lion or whatever uh, I can 
kind of be like, okay, this is what's going on. This is where you are. And I, I, that's, that's entertaining for me. And I can also see why it'd be even more entertaining for those of you who like to do the role playing aspects of the game. Uh, overall, this is kind of one of those games that's like right in the middle for me. If you're enjoying an RP game, if you enjoy games that involve dungeon crawling and customization, then Keepers of the Quester is going to be for you. If you don't like the randomness of the combat, if you don't like the fact that the rules aren't fully clarified for all the additional variables in the game, and also the fact that when reading um, the rules, you don't notice that XP is only granted to the person that is moving in the dungeon based on who you choose. There probably should have been tokens for each of the characters. I suggest you simply move them up when you've used them, and that way once all of them have been moved up, you'll know which characters are left alive or left done, and which characters you can still use that are remaining. That's a very important aspect. And of course, remember the experience is only given to the player who defeated the monster or the character, whereas the uh, health can be taken by any character when fighting in combat. Um, but otherwise, it's, it's not that complicated to learn. The rule book's uh, very straightforward. Upper Deck did a really good job of this rule book as well. It's kind of like a scroll when it pops out, which I think is really cool. And just like their Aliens game, they did something unique as well, where characters would each get their own rule book for each of their characters. And I think that's a really well done. Artwork is solid, and the quality of all the components is great as well. One small caveat as well is it would be cool to actually have a miniature for the uh, character's party, or maybe like a pawn or something like that. Make it a little more uh, higher quality in that, in that sense. But anyway, that's the basic idea and the rules and all that good stuff and it's something that you can think about to decide if it's something that you would pick up like i said for me this is something that's right down the middle i'm going to probably be playing this with josh and with max or having them play it together just so i can see what they think about it since they're more into the D, &D stuff than i am but let me know what you think below down in the comments tell me is this a game you would pick up is this a game you already have picked up why or why not <laughs> keepers of quest art by upper deck Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Keepers of Quest Star. If you're interested in the game, pick it up, link in the description. You can also go ahead and subscribe to the channel, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button to see more videos just like this one for more reviews. You can also go check out unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Our live stream is every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST where we play games just like this one here. Thank you guys so much for watching and uh, Patreon members, don't forget, thank you. I appreciate you guys as well. Donating a buck there's a link as well if you'd like to go help support us uh, for the channel all right guys now thank you guys for watching and as always i look forward to finding the quest star in the dungeon and escaping with my team and not yours next time